Could you record one for every class? Um, yeah, so like I have two algebra ones, for example. Okay, so I have two algebra ones. Okay, so I have two algebra ones, for example, so I only record one day and then I use the same video for the next day. Yeah, um, but for like a geometry, I only have one regular geometry, so I record this one every time. Um, I have one arm geometry, so you record theirs every time. I have uh, two algebra one B, so I only record one of them. Hey, hey um, for geometry, Wednesday, my dudes, on Wednesday we wear pink, okay? Student will be able to TSF, form and interpret conditional and biconditional statements, section 2.3, okay? We're going to be talking about that today here, okay? Okay, phone's away, voice is off, okay? Okay, my name, Mayambo. Daniel Carlsell. Mr. Carlsell. Okay. Conditional statement. Conditional statement is a statement that can be written in if then form. We're saying like if it's this, then it's that. Okay? And that's like a condition. If someone's saying like you, you, you can conditionally have this or you can have it on one condition, they're saying if you do this, then you can have it. If you mow the lawn, your parents will pay you $10. I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I don't know how your family has set up. Okay. If it rains, the ground will be wet. Okay? Something like that. Saying based upon this condition, that'll happen. Okay? If Crossley tells a funny joke, everyone will laugh. Right? But that's not true, though. I wish it was true because I tell funny jokes all the time and then people don't laugh. Okay? It's, it's weird. Okay? So, in symbols, we're going to use our P and our Q again, okay? Because those are different statements. Our P's and our Q's represent different statements. So we do a P, then we do an arrow toward the Q. And we read that as if P, then Q. And we don't have an if there, but this arrow tells us that means that it's going to be if P, then Q. That's how we read that. Did you make money in the door? <laughs> what are you making in the door? It's not really things. Yeah. I don't really care. Hey, Marissa. Oh, I know the next one. Okay. Um, so the blank is the phrase immediately, oh, excuse me, I need to also do this. Or we can also say that P implies Q, okay? So if something is implied, it means it follows something else, or if we're implying a sentence, we're saying, okay, well, if it rains, well, then, yeah, the graph's going to be right. It's implied. It's true without even saying it. It's true without even saying it, okay? Um, so it'd be like if I said, okay, if I said just as, as, a, as an example here, I don't think all of you are doing your own work. Am I saying you guys are cheating? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Did I actually say the words you're cheating? Yeah. No, but am I really meaning that? Yeah. yeah, so I'm implying it. It's saying without saying it, okay? But if I say, like, you guys are cheating, that's explicitly saying it. Stating it right out, okay? Wait, do you actually mean that? No. Okay? Well, I mean, I, I think some people are probably using, like, photo math and, like, stuff like that. So, like, you know, I, I, I have a feeling that some people are doing that. But, anyway. Um, Mr. Tash just gives yeah. me the answer. Uh, what's that question? I'm sure. I mean, what's that word right there? The implies. Bottom? That's the word we're talking about. Something's implied. We're not saying it outright. Okay? Oh, that's why I had to read that. Okay. Um, so the blank is the phrase immediately following the word blank. Right, Marissa? The hypothesis is the phrase immediately following the word if. Very good. The hypothesis oh. is what we call the phrase immediately following if. Okay. So that'd be our P. So that'd be our P here, okay? And P originally stood for proposition, okay? Because it was also called a proposition. Like, let me, I have a proposition for you, okay? I'm saying, like, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna suggest this to you. What do you think? What is your conclusion? Okay, conclusion is what follows. So conclusion is the phrase immediately following the word then. So we have if hypothesis, then conclusion. If hypothesis, then conclusion. Okay? Yeah, okay. It's like English. I don't want to go back there. Okay, that's too bad. Okay, continuing on. Okay, so we're going to identify the hypothesis and conclusion in these conditional statements. So these are if then statements, conditional statements. If you live in Nashville, then you live in Tennessee. Well, that's true. If you live in Nashville, you live in Tennessee. Nashville's in Tennessee, okay? So what's our hypothesis? You live in Nashville. You live in Nashville. We don't include the if, but it's what follows the if. So the hypothesis is you live in Nashville. So we'll write that out here. We'll write that on the hypothesis line. 
You live in Nashville. Who lives in Nashville? Right? <laughs> So if you live in Nashville is the first part, so that means the you live in Nashville is hypothesis. Whatever follows the if, okay? The conclusion is what follows then. So what's our conclusion here? You live in Tennessee. You live in Tennessee. You're the only ten I see, right? Uh -huh. I was just about to say that joke. Classic. Totally. You live in Tennessee. Oh, nice. Okay. And you might be wondering, okay, a lot of you are, and you've even stated that, what's this have to do with math? This is like English, okay? I know it's like English, okay? But what we're doing is I'm teaching you this new method and all these new terms and all these new things with something you're familiar with. You guys are familiar with English. You're familiar with the sentence, um, if you live in Nashville, then you live in Tennessee. You might not have heard that sentence exactly, but you're familiar with what that means. So if I introduce this way of thinking to you in English first, then I bring math into the picture um, that we're doing, it's going to make a little more sense than if I just jump into a new way of thinking with new math. That's two news at once, and that's a little tough. If I give you part of the new now, and then part of the new later, it's a little bit easier of a transition for you. Right, Celeste? Yeah. Okay. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are complementary angles. Wyatt, what's our hypothesis here? That some of the measures of the angles. Thanks, Wyatt. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Is that what you want to do? Wyatt? Oh, that's. Yeah. What's the hypothesis here? The sum of the measures of the two angles. Very good. The sum of the measures. Of two angles, and here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do, okay? Like I said earlier, really I'm a lazy writer. I'm going to do two, like the number, angles. I'm going to do the angle symbol, apostrophe S, okay? In 90 degrees. See how it fits now? Boom, magic, okay? And you don't have to write as much, okay? What's our conclusion then? Kenzie, what would our conclusion be? Very good. They are complementary angles. Once again, complementary, I'm going to shorten that down to just comp. And angles, and we do that symbol of posture, yes. Once again, this gospel is lazy sometimes. Okay? And this is the time I'm going to allow you guys to be lazy as well. Okay? I'm going to let you guys try number three. I'll let you guys try number two, okay? If the quadrilateral is a square, then, okay, that's the great angles. Quadrilateral. Uh, 
um, greater than any reason, but I, I agree with a lot of that. I'm going to change like one wording in it, but I love what you did, okay? If an angle is obtuse, then, okay? So here, where did I get all this? I got it from the first part of the sentence. I'm still keeping it in the same order. Then, it has a measure, a measure, greater than 90 degrees. So if an angle is obtuse, then it has a measure greater than 90 degrees. Did we get all of those words really just from that sentence there? So we didn't rearrange it too much, okay? We still kept it, the first part of the sentence is still the first part, the second part of the sentence is still the second part, okay? So it's important that we don't rearrange it too much, we don't get out of order too much, because sometimes that can change the meaning of a sentence. You change it around too much. Questions on that one? Okay, you wanna try the second one, Gracie? Yeah. If all numbers are divisible by four, then they're also divisible by three. Okay, so, um, so this is saying um, that all numbers that are, it should be all numbers that are divisible by four, okay? So let's do if um, if a number is divisible by four. Are you here with that, Gracie? Yeah. Okay. If a number is divisible by four, then go ahead and finish that off. Then what? Then they're also, then it is divisible by Yeah, then it is also, then it is also, Divisible by two. Okay. Once again, we see it in the same order. We see it in the same order. We're still really saying the same thing. Okay. Uh, first, it said all numbers that are divisible by four are also divisible by two. But we're saying really the same thing. If a number is divisible by four, then it has to be. It is also divisible by two. So we're really saying the same thing there. We're just saying it in a slightly different way. Question that, question that, question that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Six. States on the East Coast border the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so stating the fact states on the East Coast border the Atlantic Ocean. How can we turn that into an if then by? If the if that states are no, if states on are on the east coast, okay. then they border the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, there you go. If states are on the east coast. Then they border the Atlantic Ocean. I would agree with that. Next slide. Okay. You can also say if a state is on the East Coast, then it borders the Atlantic Ocean. If you want to, you can do it that way. Okay? Or we can do it this way. Because this is English class, right? Yeah. Is this not English class? Mike? Am I in the wrong room? Well, if you rearrange geometry, it turns into English. Yeah, I think so. I thought that's cool. Okay. Valentine's Day is in February. Okay, also that first hour in February gets me every time. Okay, so you know, fun fact. Okay, I struggle with that one. Okay, what? Valentine's Day is in February. That February has two hours. The first hour always catches me off guard. Every time. February. Yeah. February. So I'm always like February, but it, like it's actually like February. Okay, Marissa. <laughs> Perfect, okay? If it is Valentine's Day, then it is February. You all say like, hey, if it's Valentine's Day, then tomorrow there will be this kind of game. That's the best part. Count. I was thinking about doing that. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole month. But, it but it's like, okay. Wait, I don't think it works. Okay, okay. Are right, you guys okay with skipping number eight? Okay, with your permission, we'll do it. Yeah. Let's go to the next page. Oh, Mr. I'm the only one about math. Go. I gotta do I can answer all the questions. I didn't get that. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Don't 
It's literally water. Okay. Inverse is formed by doing what, Marissa? Negating. Negating. Ooh. Negating. The hypothesis and conclusion. Negating means what, guys? Uh, to add, like, not. To add not, okay? To add, like, not. To make it the opposite of whatever it is, okay? So if it doesn't have a knot, we add the knot in somewhere. If it has a knot, we take that knot out, okay? So for symbols, what's our symbol for negating something? A squiggly. A squiggly, right? Our tilde, so we do the same thing. We do like our, let me write this down actually. It's like we do the P, then Q, but now we have tilde P, tilde Q, okay? So not P, then not Q. If not P, then not Q. We just negated both, okay? And we call it the inverse, okay? And so all three of these, the inverse, converse, and contrapositive, we take our conditional, we take our conditional, and we do something to it. Okay? So for the inverse, we negate both the hypothesis and conclusion, both the P and the Q. The converse is formed by flipping. Yep, flipping. I'm going to say switching, but yeah, flipping would be at work as well. By switching the hypothesis and conclusion, we're switching the order around. So instead of going P then Q, we're going to go what then what? Q then P. Q then P. We're going to go if Q then P. We're going to switch the order now. That's why we had to be careful with our order earlier, is because switching it's an entirely different thing. It's called the converse. Okay? It's not like the shoe brand. Okay? Sorry about that. Okay? Now we have this contraposite. Okay? Here's what the contraposite looks like. Okay? It's like the inverse and the converse. They're walking down the hallway one day, holding hands. Okay? Walking down the hallway, holding hands. Okay? How gross. Okay? But now they're holding hands, walking down the hallway. Boom, they have a kid, it's the contrapositive, okay? That's how you have kids, you hold hands, walk down the hallway, don't do it, okay? It's formed by negating and switching. And switching. We do both, okay? It has a little bit of both of them in it, because it's a baby. Like the biconditional, like... We'll get to that, we'll get to that. Don't jump too far ahead, don't jump too far ahead, okay? So it's formed by negating and switching the hypothesis and conclusion, okay? Just pro tip, guys, don't hold hands, walk down the hallway, if you don't want a kid. Just saying, okay? Symbolic form... We're switching the order, so we're still going Q, then P, but now we're also negating. Okay? So a good way to think about this one is you take the converse and you negate it. Okay? A good way to think about this one is you take the converse and negate it. Okay? Sometimes that can help us out. No, what's different about it? We switch them too. We either hold hands walking down the hallway. That's good. Okay. Don't hold hands walking down the hallway. Where's their kid at? Okay, right here. It's not positive. In the hallway. It's not positive. This kid. What? Does it matter if it's not in the hallway? They don't hold hands in school. Is that better? <laughs> They're holding hands in school. If you hold hands what? in school, then you'll be picked up by anywhere else. Okay. Yes. What if I'm wrong and I don't play at all? Okay. What if I hold hands with my cell phone? What about school of bed? It's like not good, okay? <laughs> we have another word about that. We're not going to talk about that in class. Okay, we're on class of that. Okay? Can you go on? Okay. Okay. Hold on, hold on, okay? So, we're given, a, we're given a conditional statement. If it is Saturday, then there is no school. Is that true? If there's no, if there's Saturday, we have school? No, oh, okay. So it's true. Okay? So this first statement is true, okay? So, hey. What's our hypothesis of this? It is Saturday. It is Saturday's hypothesis. We call our hypothesis the P. Okay, we call it that our P. So what's our conclusion here? There's... Wait, are we both right now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. There is no school is our conclusion, okay? Now, if we recall, our conditional is P, then Q, and P, then Q, okay? So hey, we're going to write the inverse, the converse, and the contrapositive of this conditional statement. So how do you get true? Okay, because if it is Saturday, <laughs> it's a school. Oh, yeah. So that's a true statement, so I go true, okay? Um, I just randomly like the word, okay? And then we're gonna determine whether that's true or false, and we're gonna say why if it's false, it's counterexample, okay? So the inverse, we said the inverse is doing what to it? Negating. Negating, so that's our not P, arrow, not Q. And yes, I suggest writing this down right there, because the more we write it, the more we're going to remember it. Writing things does help your memory, okay? The more we write it, the more we're going to remember it, okay? 
He took that one for me. You don't believe me? Nope. Look at science. It's it's still it, even if it helps you less than others, it still helps you. It doesn't necessarily help me that well. Okay, it does help you a little bit though. Okay, I'm just saying. And he told me. So, what's the opposite of it is Saturday? It is not Saturday. It is not Saturday. So our first part is if it is Sunday. It is not Saturday. If it is not Saturday. We had that word not there somewhere. If it is not Saturday, then okay, now we have the opposite. Of Q. There is no school. What's the opposite of that? There is school. There is school. It has a no already, so we just take that out. Then there is school. I don't think she I'm going to ask you to hold that for one second. What about Sunday? I'm going to ask you to hold that for one second, too. Okay? Hi, McKenzie. Nice to meet you. That was my, that I should have taken that. All right. So if it is not Saturday, then there is school. Okay, that's our inverse. We took our P, we added not. We took our Q, we took out the no, which made it the opposite. We did the opposite of P, opposite of Q. The order stayed the same. Now, is this a true statement? If it is not Saturday, then there is school. Grace. Yeah. False. Why is it false? Because you have school on Saturdays. No. <laughs> Or son, no. You. If it is not Saturday, then there is. Because you don't, because you don't have school on Sundays. Don't have school on Sundays. We have Sundays. And some schools don't have school on Mondays. That's true. Okay, but Sundays is the more universal one, right? Okay. So if it's not Saturday, then there is school. That's not true. On Sunday, there's no school. There's another day where I'm also on the tape, so it's not true that it's not Saturday, then there is school. It's not always true. Yes. Okay. Converse, we do what Maybe with our conditional? Pregnant, okay, we left. flip it. Very good. Okay, we go Q, then P, okay? So, what's going to be our new hypothesis here? If what? Very good. If there is no school, then it is Saturday. If there is no school, then it is Saturday. Don't worry about the truth yet of this. Okay, don't worry about the truthness, truth of this yet. Okay, if there is no school, then it is Saturday. So we took our original conditional, and we just switched the order. We flipped the order there. Okay. The hypothesis came with the conclusion. The conclusion was the hypothesis. Now, is this true or false? False. False. Why is it false, Colton? We also have Sunday off. We also have Sunday off. Okay, so it's false for the same reason. We also have Sunday off. Okay? And holidays, right? Okay, what's our contrapositive? If there is school. Okay, if there is school. It's still there. Okay, and this is because we do not Q now. Okay, we, we switch it. Um, we switch the order and we negate it because it's the baby, okay? Not Q, then not P. So our uh, our not Q was uh, if there is then then there is school. So if there is school, it's still our not Q. Then it is not Saturday. It is not Saturday. Okay. So once again, don't blurt about the truthness of this yet. Okay. So a good way for us to think about this when writing it is we take our converse. And then we negate that. Okay, it's the same order as our converse, but now we negate it. Okay. So we take the the, the order of the converse with the words of our in inverse. Okay. Now is this true or false? True. That's true. If there is school, then it is not Saturday. Why is coming in today? False. I don't know. Okay. If there is school, then it's not Saturday. Well, that's true. Anytime we have school, it's not going to be Saturday. Okay. We don't have Saturday school. This is true. Okay? So I want to highlight something for us. Okay? I want to highlight something for us here. Okay? So our conditional was true. What else was true? Contrapositive. Contrapositive was also true. Okay? Conditional and contrapositive are always going to be the same, true or false. Okay? So if one of those is true, the other one has to be true. If one is false, the other one's false. Okay? What else do we notice about a pattern here right now? 
Do we notice any two others that are the same? Converse and inverse. Those are both false. Okay? So the converse, the inverse and converse will always have the same true value as well. Okay? So if the inverse is false, plus the whole. If the inverse is false, the converse is false. Vice versa. If the inverse is true, the converse is true. Okay? Now, we could have all four be true. We could have all four be false. Okay? What we know though is the conditional and converse are going to be the same. Inverse and converse are going to be the same. So we're saying that the pink that I highlighted, the conditional and composite, have the same truth value always. I'm saying this is a fact. And the inverse and converse have to have the same truth value as well. They will always have the same truth value, almost out of time. Okay? So if one is false, the other one will always be false. If one is true, the other one will always be true. Once again, it's possible that all four are true, it's possible all four are false. Is that your question? Okay. That's kind of my picture, actually. Um, any other questions on this? Gucci to the game, okay? Um, spoiler alert, okay? We're gonna do one of these. We're gonna do two, not three. Okay? What are we betting? I don't know, that's why I asked. Okay. If the product of two numbers is odd, then both numbers must be odd. If the product of two numbers is odd, then both numbers must be odd, okay? So what's our hypothesis here? I think let's definitely start What's our hypothesis here, Wyatt? Okay, the product of two numbers is odd. We leave the if off and we say the product of two numbers is odd. That's our P, that's our, um, our hypothesis, our hypothesis, okay? So what's going to be our conclusion there, Taylor? Very good. Both numbers must be odd is in fact our conclusion, our Q, okay? So our inverse is what format? We do what, what? Marissa? Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do our not p followed by not q. Okay. And the first one has said that for us. If the product of I'm gonna do two numbers as the number two and then the number symbol apostrophe s is not odd, then okay, um, both numbers. Excuse me. Um, let me let me reword that one too. Then, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Then uh, both numbers must not um. Well, I need to do uh, both numbers must not both be odd. Oops. I know I was confused. Let me reword that again. Okay, I lost that. Then. The numbers must not both be odd. I said then both to me. That should be then the numbers. If the product of two numbers is not odd, then both numbers must not be odd. Yeah. Let me let, let me uh let me explain why I did it this way specifically. Okay. I know that you're gonna lost in the middle there. Okay. If the product of two numbers is not odd, that's the opposite of the product of two numbers being odd. It's not odd. Now the opposite of both numbers having to be odd is either. So now they both don't have to be, but could one of them still be odd? Yeah. Okay, so one of them could be odd, or none of them could be odd. That's our options here. So we have to word it in a way that still makes that true. So then the numbers must not both be odd. So if we say they're both not odd, well that's not true. One of them could be, but they must not both be. One of them could be, one of them doesn't have to be. Hopefully that makes a little more sense. No? Okay. So we're trying to word that in a way to say, that the opposite of both numbers having to be odd is saying that they both don't have to be. Okay, they both could, they one of them still could be, but they both don't have to be. Okay, at least one has to be, or neither has to be. We're trying to word it in a way that still makes that true. Okay. Um, now, if the product of two numbers is not odd, okay. So what are two numbers? What's the number that's not odd? Okay, four. What's the product of four? What are, what are the factors of four? What multiplies of four? Two. Two and two, okay? So are both numbers odd? No. Okay, two and two are not odd, and the product is not odd. So, so far that's true. Can we think of a time where we ever multiply to an odd number, or to an even number, excuse me, like four, six, eight, ten, and we use two odd numbers to do that? I don't think that happens. 
5 times 5 is 25. 25. Okay, and that's still odd. Okay. 5 times 2. Okay, 5 times 2 is even. Okay, so are both numbers odd? 25 is odd. It starts with a 2, doesn't it? It's even, it's just it's a little bit. Okay, you're not done, you're great. Okay. So this is true, okay? Let me go back up. Let me go back up to the truth value of our first of our conditional because I skipped that on accident, okay? If the product of two numbers is odd, so a number times a number is odd, then both numbers must be odd, okay? Let's go back up to that truth value. If the product of two numbers is odd, then both numbers must be odd, okay? So, how do you, so let's pick an odd number. Three. Okay, three. How do you get the three? What times what? Why one times three? One times one three, okay? Times Are one and three both odd? Yeah. Okay? So the product of two numbers is odd. One times three. Both numbers must be odd. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Can you ever get to an odd number by multiplying two evens? No. No. Two evens is always an even. You can't get there by multiplying one of each either, because an even times an odd is always an even. Okay? Oh. So this I is true. Say it again. Okay, an even times an odd is always an even. Here's that. Let me show you why. Okay, kind of cool. They need multiple of two. Okay. Let me explain why that is, okay? Sidebar, sidebar, sidebar. Okay? So an even times an odd is always even. Well, what does it mean to be even? It's divisible by what number? Two. Two, okay? So if we take an even number, like let's just say two, multiply by an odd number. The six has to be divisible by two. Yeah. yeah, because two multiply to get there. Okay. If four times three is twelve, well, twelve has to be divisible by two. Because if we were to go back and split into a factor tree, four and three. Oh, four breaks into two and two. So two goes into all even numbers. Since two is a factor of every even number, anytime an even number multiplied with an odd number, we're always going to get an even number. Because it'll always be divisible by two still. <laughs> like, plus, like, mind blown! Okay? So that's a little sidebar, okay? What about 846? Yes, it's even. It ends in an even number. Anytime it ends in an even number, it's divisible by 2. Wait, but then 20 is an even number? Mm -hmm. Because 0 is neither odd nor even, but it's still divisible. 20 is still divisible by 2. What? Because what's 20 divided by 2? Yeah. Yeah. So it's divisible by 2. So no, but I mean, like, why? I don't get why 25. Is, five, is, it, is 25, is 2 going to 25 even? But 2 is 10. Because 2 and the 5. Okay, anyway, converse. Converse back on track is Q then P. Voice off. Converse is Q then P, okay? So, we're going to take the original and switch it around. If both numbers must be odd, okay? And I'm just going to actually, I'm going to switch the must be around, okay? Because I don't think it makes sense for a must be to be first, okay? I'm going to say if, two number, if both numbers are odd, mm -hmm. I know, I'm infuriating you, okay? Wait, then, do I have to do that? Can I just leave it like the way I'm putting it? Sure. If you, are, if you want to put, if both sense. numbers must be odd, go ahead. I just put oh. both numbers odd. Yeah, that's probably that. Then, can we put their product? Yeah. Okay, because we know what we're talking about now. So we can use a, a pronoun, possessive pronoun, like there. Why it's six feet on the floor. Okay. Then their product is odd. You were just skipping in that stool. Yes. I'm Bad influence. I'm answering. <laughs> That's me. That is two for two. Oh. Oh. I agree. Oh my Ooh. god. Oh my gosh. I have like a circle. So what you can do well. So what you can do well. I'm like, I'm not confused, but like. I'm 
and we're doing part of our position. Okay. Pain giving the biggest bra look possible. Definition, the conjunction, conjunction was our and statement, okay? Oh, I a letter there. Okay, the conjunction, that's our and statement, the conjunction of a conditional and its converse. So conjunction means our and symbol. So we're putting our conditional statement, our if then, together with the converse, the flipped order of that, and we're making it an and statement. So kind of like our truth table a little bit, okay? That's why our symbols, this this first part that I forgot we're talking about the first part, if p then q, that's our conditional. Cover up the first part, the second part, if q then p, that's our converse. Okay? And then we have our and between them. So that's our conjunction of the conditional and the converse, okay? That's a conjunction of the conditional and the converse. Now, this is a long symbol here. Okay, this is a long symbol here, okay? So what we do is we often do P and Q, and we do a double arrow in between. We do a double arrow in between. Because we say, okay, if we have an arrow going from P to Q, and an arrow going from Q to P, now this arrow goes from P to Q and Q to P. It goes both directions now. We combine it into one symbol just to make it easier to write. Okay. We say, oh, that's less, that's less to write. And we read this as P if and only if Q. So it's saying P is true if Q is true, but it's also only true when Q is true. So we're saying um, P if and only if Q. We're saying P is, if P is true, Q is true. We're also saying it's only true when Q is true. So it's saying um, it goes both ways. So if P is true, then Q has to be true. But also, if Q is true, then P has to be true. So if P is false, then Q is true. In this case, yes. Is For my have, condition. And it's true. always that way? Yep, yep, yep. For when a biconditional is true, that will be the case. Okay. So biconditionals are true when both, oh, that was a really, that's a really bad O. When both the conditional And the converse are true. So the biconditional statements are true when both conditional and converse are true. Okay, so if the conditional is true, the converse is true, then it would have a true biconditional. If even one of those is false, it wouldn't be true. Okay. And hey, if we look back up at this and symbol, we said earlier today and on Monday, and symbol means that they both have to be true, right? So that's what we're saying here. The conditional has to be true. Converse has to be true. We're just kind of referring back to that and using the same kind of idea here. Okay? But, so, given the biconditional statement below, pause. Here's our biconditional statement. Two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Okay? So we have part of a statement, if and only if, another statement. We're asked to write both the conditional and its converse. Okay, we're asked to write the conditional and its converse. We'll get to the second sentence in a second. Okay, so if we're writing the conditional and the converse, we need to identify what's our P and what's our Q. Okay, so according to this P if and only if Q, that means we're going to be separated by the if and only if. So which part is our P? The first part is going to be our P. We do P if and only if Q, P if and only if Q. So P, if and only if, so what's Q then? The sum of their measures is 180, yeah. So that would be our Q, okay? So if that, if we know our P and our Q, can we write the conditional statement like we did earlier? Yes. Okay, that's the one where we go if P then Q, right? Okay, can somebody tell me how we would write this? Okay, go ahead, Marissa. Two angles are supplementary, then the sum of their measures must be. Very good. Two angles are supplementary. Once again, I'm doing some shortcuts up here for the two I'm drawing the two. The angles I'm drawing the angle symbol, posture yes. Supplementary, I'm just going to say, oh, okay. 
two angles on the top boundary, then the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Two angles on the top boundary, then the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Okay, is that true? Yeah, that's our definition of sum measure, okay? The definition of sum measure says, hey, if two angles are sum measure, then they do add up to 180. So we know that this is true. Okay. Converse. Converse is a flipped order, right? So we're going Q, then P. I get a volunteer to tell us what this one would be. Okay. Jessica, I'm going to volunteer you here. Okay. Q, then P. So we're going to do our if Q, then P. Here's what that would be. If the sum of, now in here, um, when it says there, and this is first of all very good, Jessica, okay? When it says there, do we know what the there is referring to if it's at the beginning of a sentence? No, so we have to say it there. You can't, you can't use a pronoun at the beginning of a sentence if you don't know what it's talking about. So if the sum of two angles, okay, if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then, now, when it says two angles, some manner, you know we're talking about two angles if we use the pronoun now. So we can use now, then, they are supplementary. Now we can use the pronoun they. Okay. If the sum of two angles is 180, then they are supplementary. Is that true? Yeah, if two angles add up to 180, we say they're supplementary. So, are both the conditional and the converse true? Yeah, so what's that make our con uh, by conditional if both the conditional and converse are true? It makes it, it makes it true. Now, even if one of those was false, we would say, oh, it's false, and it's because one of these two is false. We can say which one's false. Okay, so questions on that? Just to make you ask that question, actually. I, I have a cold here just to make you ask that Just to make you ask that question. Okay, now we're going to stop there in the notes for now. And I'm going to give you part of our homework, okay? But not all the homework, because we didn't do all of the notes, okay? So, how this is going to work, okay? And I'm going to give you this work, and we're not going to cross things out on it that we're not doing yet, because we're going to go back to those later, okay? We're not going to cross things out on the worksheet yet, because we're going to go back to those later, okay? Um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the first five in their entirety, okay? And we're going to do part or most of number six, so I'll clarify that. Everyone has their worksheet in front of them, they can see it. Because we know what we're talking about. I'm like a villain. I'm like actually like really cold. I'm like actually like really cold. I'm just crossing my fingers. Well, that's what I just want to say. I know, really. Did you say I'm cold? We need another one. Hi, I'm cold and I'm hungry. yet, okay? So on numbers one through five, you're doing all of it, okay? And on number six, you're going to do the inverse, the converse, and the contrapositive. And we are not going to do the biconditional yet, because we haven't done that yet. We will not touch the back yet, okay? We will not touch the back yet, okay? Questions on that? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 